can your engine actually turn without burning? And if it does, should you be worried that it may imminently go poopy in its trousers? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. I'm kind of in the middle of shooting this whole Triton Ute review right at the moment, but I thought I'd detain you briefly here at the beautiful bottom of the river, a literal low point in a career such as mine, to discuss this whole fuel efficiency engineering consumption conundrum posed by Jason. When my car rolls downhill in gear without accelerator input, the instantaneous fuel usage shows zero. However, if I flick to neutral and simply roll, it will read from 0.6 to 1.1 litres per 100. The engine is definitely turning and firing, so it can't possibly be using the reported zero. But the fact that all my recent vehicles have said this makes me wonder what's going on. Is there something about being in gear that miraculously uses less fuel than when in neutral? So the short answer is, yeah, the fuel is completely shut off on a trailing throttle because, hey, you don't need it. Now, here's a slightly longer version, okay, in case you're wondering about the why or the how of all of that. And of course, that relates to where we kicked off this video down there. To get down there to the bridge, obviously, you got to start somewhere like up here. And I just checked this, you know, because I don't feel very different up here. and. Certainly the car doesn't feel any different either, but if you are a beer garden physicist, then they are profoundly different states, up here and down there. And I just checked on a topographic map, okay? There is 150 meters of vertical height difference between here and the bridge. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8055, I think it is, meters per second squared, let's call it 10. And the Triton is 1900 and something kilos, let's call it 2000, just to make the mathematics easier, okay? The difference between being up here and down there is gravitational potential energy. So about 2000 times about 150 meters times about 10 for acceleration due to gravity is 3 million joules of gravitational potential energy. That's what you've got up here that you don't have down there. And what we've done obviously is bleed it away. We've been using that gravitational energy to turn the wheels, to turn the engine, to overcome rolling resistance, to keep the ancillaries running around the engine, the air conditioning, the oil pump, the alternator, all of those things that you really need. So when you go from a high position to a low position, you lunch off this gravitational potential energy budget. And that is, of course, why it's so much more fuel efficient to drive downhill than it is to drive uphill. I mean, if you're just trucking along the flat at 80 k's an hour, let's call that zero, okay? To go downhill, three million joules in this situation of energy that you don't need to source from hydrocarbons. And if you're going uphill, of course, there's another three million that you absolutely need to burn to reacquire this elevation. So that all of this plays out when you are just taking your foot off the throttle, and you may not have thought about it, but you don't need the liquid fuel energy source for motivation to provide useful work to keep the engine turning and to drive the wheels forward when you're getting enough of an assist from gravity. And basically you don't need the fuel in there for any other purpose. There's no magic going on. If the crankshaft is turning, all of the other bits that you need are turning. The engine is turning, but it's not burning. There's another explanation for this as well. We can go 100% Isaac Newton. Yes, alchemist, curator of the royal mint, dude who died a virgin, but also, in my view, greatest scientific genius, at least in the mechanics, thermodynamics sphere of recorded history. So, if you go to film school, they call this a continuity error. So, if you're working on the next big Hollywood blockbuster, 
don't do this, all right? Because you'll have to get De Niro back in his private plane and the studio will hate that. Any YouTube video, not so much. The light buggered me yesterday and I missed out on this bit. So anyway, here it is. If you go to engineering school, all right, this is how Isaac Newton plays out when your car goes downhill and the fuel shuts off. So what we've got here is a level reference there and a bit of a gradient, like a hill that you're going down. Here's your car going downhill. We'll get to that. And of course, the big force that Newton is so famous for is gravity working down here through the car's center of mass. And the big engineering trick with forces and things of that nature is that you can split them up into components. And what you've got to do is just draw a little right angle triangle here like that. So you've got a component of gravity that pushes the car into the road. And we know that, right? Because the car does not spontaneously just float up off the road. That's always good. Very shocking if it does that at any stage. So you've got most of gravity working down here like this, keeping the car on the road, that's nice. But you've also got a little bit of gravity pushing this way. So you've got two components, you can forget about the big arrow and replace it with these two smaller arrows, which is always nice. And this arrow here is obviously the thrust that pushes you downhill. That's why it's so nice to get on a bicycle and go downhill because you've got this bit of gravity giving you a free kick. And if you want to figure out how big this is, there's a hack. So we'll go wherever it is over there back to the non-continuity thingo and talk about the hack. If you're on a 10% slope going downhill, then basically 10% of gravity is pushing you along. So 10% of gravity is back here pushing you along and on a 2000 kilo vehicle like the Triton, that means 200 kilos pushing you down the hill. So isn't that easy, right? You don't have to worry about actual mathematics and trigonometry and work out the sine or the cos or the tan and figure out which one that is. Basically, you know, this angle here equals that angle there. That's really all you need to know. And on this hack works for shallow gradients like roads, okay? And what you know is that Highways are typically designed with a maximum gradient of like six or seven percent and let's say ten for the steepest bits of highways that you might routinely encounter in the developed world and ten percent is nice and easy isn't it because ten percent of a two thousand kilo car is going to be a couple of hundred kilos pushing it downhill so that's pretty easy to wrap one's brain around if it's one of those steeper traditional grades like say six percent and you've got your 2000 kilo vehicle then that's going to be like 120 kilos of free kick gravity thrust so that's kind of nice so when you think about it right gravity is kind of the same thing as Buzz Lightyear behind the vehicle like this on the flat with a rocket pack or retro whatever that he's got built into his boots. I don't know what he called that. Anyway, it's this continuous thrust applied here to the back of the vehicle pushing you forward or in the case of a hill downwards and you get it kind of for free continuously, right? So this is kind of the Newtonian approach as opposed to the thermodynamics conservation of energy approach that we talked about earlier. Whichever way you think about this, if you are on a 10% slope, okay, and you've got a two ton vehicle, gravity is hanging out the back here, giving you 200 kilos of thrust. And obviously it's doing a few other things, isn't it? Pretty clearly, it's gonna turn the wheels, right? 200 kilos, what's that? Three or four big strapping chaps with reasonable traction underneath their trainers, pushing the whole car forward. The wheels are gonna turn, and the wheels are, of course, connected to the drive line. The drive line's connected to the transmission. The transmission's got a torque converter between the engine and the transmission. Let's assume, for the sake of argument, that it is locked up. That means, So clearly, right, the engine is going to turn. And you can see that, okay, when you drive this car, it does exactly that. It shuts the fuel down when you're on a trailing throttle, provided you're going faster than about 40 k's an hour. And you can see the taco 
it's doing 1500 revs, 2000 RPM, whatever. It's some speed like that, zero fuel on the instantaneous display. And I tested that by doing something that I will not tell you, because you should never do that. But anyway, what I did, and I can't say it because I'd have to kill you, it confirmed for me unequivocally that this engine is delivering zero fuel in that trailing throttle state above about uh, 45, 50 k's an hour, something like that. Anywho, when the engine is turning, right, all of those things that you care about, like the oil pump, it's turning. So it's delivering pressurized oil to all of the parts. That's fine. They're not going to wear out. Your alternator is also turning. So happy days. You've got as much electricity as you need to keep Battery Boy over there completely topped up. The air conditioning compressor is going to be turning as well. And that means if it's a sultry Australian summer's day, no wackers as they say in the classics, all right? And the engine's still going to be functioning as an air pump as well, right? You'll be drawing air in and expelling air down the exhaust pipe. There'll be a vacuum in the manifold, and that means the brake booster is still going to function. And that's why it feels as if the engine is running, because it's turning, and all the bits that you normally depend upon are working. The only difference is that there is a zero fuel state. I did not know an engine could fire without fuel. Always presumed there had to be a fuel to air mixture of some sort for there to be any kind of bang. A good day is any day you learn something and today I have, so thank you. Slight misconception there from Jason, I think, and that is Air doesn't burn on its own, you need the fuel. So in the absence of fuel, even in a petrol engine, this is a diesel obviously, so no spark plugs here, it's a compression ignition engine. But even in a spark ignition gasoline engine, there's no firing taking place in the absence of fuel. You might get a spark generated between the electrodes of the spark plug, but nothing more than that is going to happen, clearly. And I don't know if they actually shut down the spark generation mechanism in a gasoline lean engine in that zero fuel state. I don't know enough about the granular detail there, but definitely not firing in the absence of fuel. Is it bad for the plugs to fire when there's no fuel, particularly for an extended period? I recently used the engine to brake the car in this way all the way to the bottom of a mountain. My trusty trip computer said this was costing me nothing, so I was happy to roll with it. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Pardon the pun. I'm now wondering if this extended amount of engine firing with zero fuel was in any way bad for the plugs or the cylinders. I think in this situation, you have to give the engineers that designed the whole powertrain control algorithm some credit because obviously this zero fuel shutdown strategy is built in and it's built in for a reason. It's there because that's the best thing to do in those operating conditions. And when you think about it, right, there's not a great deal of mechanical effort involved because usually you're in a fairly high gear in the transmission and obviously in a high gear it's hard work for the engine to drive the wheels but when you flip that around and you've got gravity driving the wheels driving the engine it's like reversing the lever, the position of the load and the effort so it's actually fairly easy for the wheels to turn the engine in that downhill trailing throttle zero fuel state and it's kind of the flip side of the reason why they tell you to park a manual in first gear or reverse. They don't say park it in any gear you like mate, I mean sixth gear will be fine because that is just flat out nuts because of mechanical advantage. But I can't think of a single operating constraint that makes this zero fuel strategy a bad thing. I guess the only other consideration is, do you select neutral and let your engine idle so that it's turning and burning and you're happy with that because fuel's actually going in, or do you leave it in, duh, and just let the algorithm and the engineers sort it all out. And I'd say go with B, because with plan B, zero fuel. Not that there's that much either way, okay? Because at idle, you're drinking in a two litre petrol engine, probably 600 millilitres of fuel per hour at idle. So if you look at that per minute, what's that about? 10 millilitres of fuel per minute. 
So you go downhill for one minute and you're in that zero fuel state versus idling, the difference is 10 millilitres. That's like 1.5 cents in Schittsvillian micro pesos that we're arguing the toss over. So it's bugger all either way. You'll never be able to measure the difference in consumption. But it is a pain in the ass to select neutral when you're going downhill and do all of that fuffing around with the transmission when you could just be concentrating on relaxing and focusing on the driving environment and doing it as well as you can and letting these details that don't matter be handled by the engineers who busted their humps in R&D to get this stuff right. So anyway, that's what's happening to your car on a trailing throttle. I hope this helps because it's one of those few situations where zero fuel consumption <laughs> actually means zero. And on that happy note, if only we could drive downhill all the time, wouldn't that be a boon for the cost of motoring? Thanks for watching, back to the Triton Review.